Hi everyone. <clears throat> Hope you all are doing well. Uh, this session has already been announced is basically a grand revision session for the uh, strategic business leadership exam, which is uh, coming in upcoming March 2024. Although this session can be used uh, in, in the further uh, uh, attempts. But the thing is, this is specifically uh, the topics that can be tested while reading the pre-scene, which I have already issued, right? While reading the pre-scene, which I have already issued. So this, uh, this session is just uh, to make sure that these can be the theoretical topics that can be tested along with the past papers, uh, which itself can be a question for the student. So therefore, uh, I have designed this three hour revision package and I'll be conducting more classes also. But this three hour session will make sure that we have covered enough data and we have seen enough past papers so that uh, we could look into detail here. Right? So let's just start. <clears throat> Let me share the screen. Just a second. So uh, the first important chapter, I would say, uh, that can be tested in, in this uh, March 2024 is uh, strategy. So this is, again, a small specific chapter we'll try to cover. So the motive of these classes is simple, just to make you uh, revise the topic, important topics, what we have, and the past papers relevant that, that uh, just test that topic, right? So the first thing which we have is strategy. This is always a hot favorite topic for examiner. If you can take the previous attempts, you can see uh, that we have got many, many, many questions from strategy. In fact, the models that refer strategy such as SFA and there are a couple of other models also. So we will try to cover, although the SFA model is covered in the theoretical classes that we had and the past paper classes. But the thing is, that we need to cover these, right? So the motive of these classes is simple, to cover the theory. And along with that, we make sure that we have uh, enough past papers to make sure that what we learned in the theory is been done by us, right? So see, the terminology is relating to strategic management. The terminology is related to strategic management have multiple definitions. So if, if someone wants you to define strategic management, if someone wants you to define strategic management, so it's simple that it has multiple definitions. Your and mine definition can be different, right? So have multiple definitions, which sometimes uh, differ significantly depending on authors and their school of thoughts. Following are the most general descriptions. So here come a question that's, a, do we need to learn definitions? Do we need to learn definitions in SBL? 
I won't be saying that you have to learn definitions, but it always give you a good start. If you if you can define any particular topic, then it always give you a good start. Uh, that make sure that you 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 can test these topics, right? That that make sure that you can test these topics. If any of the topic is being tested, you can link it with the scenario. But a definition would give you a better viewpoint, right? A definition would give you a better viewpoint. Uh, so these are the most uh, important definitions uh, that are that can be tested and that you can have seen. Obviously, uh, that's vision. If I can ask you that, what's vision? So vision is simply uh, the desired future state in which the organization wishes to see itself. If I ask you that, what's your vision? So vision means that what you want from yourself or what you want to see in yourself in the future, right? Like where you see yourself in the future is the vision state. <clears throat> so the most important definition, the most important definition for vision is that is the desired future state in which organization wishes to see itself. Right? <clears throat> Similarly, if I ask you, mission, what is mission? So mission is organization's overriding purpose of existence. There's a confusion between vision and mission, right? There's a confusion between vision and mission. What's vision? Vision is basically a desired future state, right? Where organization wants to see itself. And mission is the purpose of existence. That's the main difference, right? That's the main difference. Mission is what shareholders or stakeholders expect from you. Vision is what you expect from yourself, right? So that's the main difference between vision and mission. I see many students, those who don't have exactly idea what's the difference between vision and mission. In fact, you can see many annual reports, right? I remember you can see many annual reports in which vision and mission uh, is basically separately mentioned. So you guys must know that what is vision? Vision is basically the organization's uh, wish to see itself. And mission is uh, the purpose of existence. And where do stakeholders see themselves and what do stakeholders expect, right? So if someone asks you to define mission, if someone asks you to define mission, what you're going to be saying that why do we exist, right? If someone design, if someone describe, wants you to describe missions, so that means why do we exist? What do shareholders, stakeholders expect from us? What is our purpose of existence? Whereas the vision's definition is, is that where do we see ourselves in future? Where do we see ourselves in future? Is it clear, guys? See, these importance, see, these importance are, uh, I'll say, uh, key important num uh, definitions and that can help you to draft particularly on vision and mission. So make sure uh, you guys draft that, right? So make sure you guys draft that. Uh, and learn that while drafting. Now, core values. What are core values, guys? Core values defines how the organization wishes to operate and guides organization's actions, right? What are the core values? They, 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 they basically tell you that why and how uh, we wish to operate, like standard rules, I would say, right? The standard rules that organizations have, huh? standard rules that organizations have so why do we uh, how we wish to operate and its principles can be its core values yeah its principles can be core values includes integrity equal opportunity employer diversity if you know if you if you if you are active on linkedin you can see that many of the employers post and uh, mention one thing that we are equally uh, opportunity provider employer, like right? we, we are the equal opportunity provider uh, employer. 
Similarly, diversity can be one of the core value that we have to make sure not just the uh, male versus female ratio. We we may we have to hire different age groups, different professionals from the different bodies. So that can be the core value, right? That can be the core value, and core value should be explicitly stated either within the mission statement or through a separate subsidiary statement. So core values needs to be mentioned, right? In fact, I remember when I was uh, working for one of the la uh, one of the uh, leading MNC. So we have to make annual report, right? An annual report, there was a criteria that we were competing in that's best corporate report, right? There, that in that annual report, there was a criteria that we were competing in and that was best corporate report. So best corporate report that leads you to, uh, and you, in order to win that uh, criteria that was termed as BCR, best corporate report, you have to make sure that you have made the vision statement available, you have made the mission statement available, you have mentioned the core values available. <clears throat> so now, what does that mean? Guys, that means that you have mentioned each and everything so uh, therefore it's written here that core values should be explicitly stated huh core values should be explicitly stated uh, either within the mission statement or through separate subsidiary statement now here comes an assignment what's the assignment that visit annual reports of different companies and see whether these things are mentioned or not right visit annual reports of different companies and see that whether they are mentioned or not, whether these things are mentioned or not. So it's just an assignment now to make sure. And in fact, I remember one of the past paper, there was uh, asked to categorize things in vision, mission, either it was in P1, P3 or in SBL previous attempts, that they want you to read the vision and mission and uh, summarize the points from that, that what's exactly the vision and what's exactly the mission. So there can be a past paper on it also, right? We'll be attempting many things, but the thing is there could be questions from it, right? Now, again, another confusion that I usually see in the students, another confusion that I usually see in the students is confusion in goals and objectives, confusion in goals and objectives. I see uh, definitions here are important, right? That would allow you to draft in a better way that would allow you to uh, sequence, uh, make, make notes in a sequence such that that could give you some good marks, right? That would give you some good marks. So you could score good marks in professional, right? Now see, what is goals? So goals are smaller targets to achieve the mission. If I could ask you, that's uh, what are the goals? So you'll say that goals are smaller targets. Goals are smaller targets to achieve the mission. So goals are generally qualitative in nature goals are generally qualitative in nature that that just means that they are smaller targets if someone asks you that define goals so what you're going to be doing that goals are smaller targets to achieve the mission goals are smaller targets to achieve the mission right and they are qualitative in nature huh? They are not quantitative, qualitative. What can be someone's goals? Increase sales, reduce cost, increase customer satisfaction, new products, ETC. What can be someone's goal? That you have to increase the sales. You have to reduce the cost. You have to increase customer satisfaction. You have to launch new products, right? So these are your goals. These are your goals. And then what can be objective? Objectives are more specific targets to achieve the mission, right? So objective had a link with mission. Goals are smaller targets and objectives are more specific targets, right? Objectives are more specific targets to achieve the mission.
so they can be quantitative in nature guys i'll just give you a clarity for this march 2024 attempt while reading the pre scene strategizing can be one of the important thing that can be tested in this exam so reading this chapter and attempting some questions from the strategy can give you a better idea right so objectives are more specific target to achieve the mission and they can be quantitative in nature right they can be quantitative in nature so objectives should be smart huh objectives should be smart what what is smart specific measurable achievable result oriented and time bounded this is this is basically this is basically a mnemonic code right this is basically a mnemonic code what does that means that means objectives right what does that means that means objective so increasing sales is a goal but increasing sales by 10% is objective reducing cost is a goal reducing production cost by 5% per annum is objective so there there is a very slight difference between objectives that objectives are more specific right if I, if i can give you uh, a particular definition that what are objectives they are more specific than goals goals are quite uh, not that much specific but objectives are specific right then the general line then the general line here that objectives and goals are developed at highest level right objectives and goals are developed at highest level filter down into divisions departments functions till it reaches down to an individual's work target level till it reaches down to an individual's work target level right so goals and objectives are developed at highest level then filter down to divisions departments functions till it reaches down to individual target level right so goals and objectives are on the top and then it filter down in divisions departments functions and people and all that and then uh, like if i can give you an example that i was involved in a budget cycle budget is mainly a goal of a company to achieve right so first the budget is made for the complete business right and then it it is uh, are uh, segregated in different departments of business then in divisions then in functions right and then in fact to people so that means that you, at first what you have to do at first what you guys have to do is to make budget right at first what you guys have to do is to pay is to make budget at a top level similarly objectives and goals are made at the top level and then it has filtered down right and then it is filtered down in in this well see the budget could be that you have to appear you have to make 450 million pat that could be your budget right 450 million or let's say uh 500 million pat right now you have to divide it that who's gonna contribute what in this part so it will be on the business level and then from businesses who's gonna make a departmental level you have to break down it into a departmental level right so that will be department and then we have divisions functions people and all that right so uh this is the difference between goals and objectives so far we have done strategy we have done vision mission goals objectives these are some key concepts here right First, you have to understand the concept and then we can uh, write, right? <clears throat> now, see, what's written here? This cascading concept known as management by objectives was given by Peter Drucker. Although you don't need to remember the name, but I would just highlight it that this categorization of the objectives into the individual target level, right? This categorization, this categorization of objective from this categorization of objectives from consolidated to individual level from consolidated to individual level was given 
by this man, Peter Drucker, right? Now, while consolidating vision, mission, goals, objectives, what strategy? Strategies basically are developed to achieve goals, objective, hence the mission of the organization. So if someone wants to understand what is strategy, you need to understand goals, objectives, mission, and vision so that you can define strategy that in order to get your goal, in order to get your objective, in order to get your mission, you need to make strategy, right? You need to make strategy. Then strategic management is basically how an organization manages strategies. And believe me, guys, these strategic management, these strategies are, are highly confidential thing, right? In fact, in an organization, they choose people and they, they, they sign NDAs. If, if, if there's a strategy of a particular acquisition of a particular dis disposal, no one knows. No one releases this information. They, they sign non-disclosure agreements, right? Why, why they do that? Because it, it can impact the share price, huh? It can impact the share price. So these strategies are made at a key level, at a top level, with, with confidentiality, with non-disclosure agreements. And why is that? Because it can impact the company's reputation. So strategic management is basically how an organization manages these strategies, whether they whether they uh, strategies made are open-ended, whether the organization is risk seeker, risk averse, you have to think of it, right? You guys have to think of it. Creating strategies, implementing them, monitoring them, revising them, getting the desired results, comparing them with the uh, strategy and the actual numbers. So this strategic management is a key is a key role, I would say. It's a key role in an organization. It's it's a confidential role in an organization that you have to make make sure the confidentiality, you have some uh, that much news that you could do some insider things, right? But obviously that's not allowed. So strategic management, being in a strategic role, being on a driving gear of a organization is a key role, right? So therefore, you know the mission, vision, each and everything, and then you can drive, right? And in most of the exams I see, in SBL that they make you the strategist, right? They, they, they give you a top level position, which is basically a strategist and you have to give some strategies for that, right? You have to give some strategies for that. <clears throat> now, there's a one model. What's that? That's strategic management. One model is here. And what is that? That is strategic management. Right? Now, three stages involved in strategic management. Huh? Three stages involved in strategic management. And what are they? And what are they? That first you have to analyze your strategic position. While do the strategic management, what you have to do. While doing the strategic management, what you have to do. You have to analyze your strategic management. You have to analyze your strategic management. That means review strategic position in light of. That means review strategic position in light of current position, external environment, country, industry, internal resources, human resources, financial resources, IT resources. What are your strength weaknesses? What's your brand corporate image? So first you need, first you need to identify first you need to identify your strategic position first you need to identify your strategic position what is that why is that right you need to identify your strategic position what is your mission expectation of key stakeholders clarity of mission of future of direction right and here the key techniques that can be used, huh? the key techniques that can be used are quarter five forces model, pestle analysis, SWOT analysis, value chain analysis, stakeholder mapping model. These, these are the key techniques that can use, that can be used to highlight your position. 
to highlight your position for strategic management to highlight your position for strategic management right then you have to do strategic choices what strategic choices that's generate all possible options to reach mission analyze pros and cons of all options and select the strategy that suits you huh? select the strategy that suits you so this was a summary of strategic uh, particular strategy that can be made right and a uh, chapter pertaining to strategy we have one model also which i have always taught in my attempting the past papers i remember uh, let me open that <clears throat> Yeah, this SFA framework, huh? the SFA framework. So I've taught this model. This also pertains to strategy. Huh? This also pertains to strategy. Uh, guys who don't have this book, kindly download it from LMS. It's uploaded on LMS, right? This model is used to acquire another company and all that. And I've taught this in uh, while attempting a question that first you need to think of suitability, whether the factors are suitable than feasibility so this this part is covered in the classes which we have had and we have done multiple past papers of it so just a brief review of sfa model that pertains to the strategic chapter that first you need to identify that whether the strategy is suitable to you right once you have identified that the strategy is suitable uh then feasible it whether it is feasible that you have the expertise you have the financial resources you have the brand image that can lead and once this uh, strategy is found to be feasible then you have to identify that whether the strategy is acceptable what is that that you have the enough acceptability here you have got enough uh, resources you have got enough funds you have got uh, the shareholders approvals so these three factors need to identify it before implementing a particular strategy and the strategy could be acquire any company uh, uh, do some revamping do some uh, refurbishment do some these type of things right so strategy needs to be done in these three stages suitability feasibility acceptability and we have attempted this theoretical model in many past papers in many 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 past papers right Guys, I would again highlight that this session is highlighting the importance of the chapters that we have in the upcoming area, right? And we have to make sure that we are attempting these chapters regularly. We are attempting these, uh, seeing these classes and, and doing the more questions of this, this particular theory <clears throat> regularly, right? So let's, some, let's just do uh, some questions. Let's just do some questions that test the strategic uh, chapters, right? That, that test the strategy. So let's do these questions and that could help us in identifying uh, that what exactly can be tested from this chapter, right? <clears throat> Just a second. So see guys, uh, the strategic chapter is being done and now I have moved to one particular past paper and now I have moved to one particular past paper that, that leads and tests the strategy, right? Obviously, I'll not be attempting this complete past paper here, but I can do refer to a question. I can do refer here a question that is from the chapter strategy right obviously we we don't have that much time to read each and every question of this paper but i'll what i'll be do doing is that i'll cover 
a particular chapter and then I'll lead you to the drafting practice of that, right? I'll cover a particular chapter and I'll lead you to a drafting practice of that, okay? So that's how our strategy will go. So let's just read that question which just gone through uh, <clears throat> my eyes that the sales director has asked you to provide a set of notes. The sales director has asked you to provide a set of notes to accompany the presentation he has prepared for the board, which discusses how the sales development strategies he has proposed will assist Dulls in achieving its strategic aim. So those students who know my way of teaching, in the past papers we attempted, I always told you, in the past papers we attempted, I always told you to allocate the exhibits to the requirements. So here, the allocated exhibit is exhibit two. Guys, I'm not attempting a past paper here, I'll be saying, right? Don't expect that I'll be writing each and everything now. I have done this, this past papers multiple times in my previous recording. Now the aim of these revision webinars is to give you an idea that what to write and how to write. So if you got a question from strategy, you have gone through the theory of strategy and now you have to draft the strategic aim, right? Again, we have done enough classes on professional skills also. So we'll be doing that later. Now the proper reason of conducting this webinar is to make sure that you have cover theory and you know what to write for professionalism you need to draft it and i'll be conducting and i have conducted the classes on professional skills also so for today's target for today's of our revision webinars target is to attempt this question so i've allocated the topic we know the skill we have done classes of this so we just want to focus on requirement now, right? We have done enough practice. I've conducted, I, I, I know my classes are around 50, 60 plus classes and it, it consumes 100 plus hours. But the thing is now we are practicing for the last week. So we need to think of it, right? So directly jump into exhibit two. Directly jump into exhibit two. This is, this is proposed sales development strategies. Sales development strategy, a presentation by sales director, right? A presentation by sales director. What's that? That's Dell's shops, 165 High Street Shop, our main sales channel in Northland, uh, despite declining annual sales for last three years, despite declining annual sales, right? Require investment in refurbishment, staff training, Improve customer experience. Close 20 shops next year to focus on most profitable locations. Now, what examiner wants from you is to identify them that whether this strategy is going to make their strategic aim possible. Whether this strategy is going to make their strategic aim possible. You have to guide them this. Similarly, Dell's website. So used to sell our whole range of products, individuals and corporate clients. Used to sell whole range of products, individuals and corporate clients. Possibility to develop their uh, other gift ideas such as flowers. They are basically gifting flowers to the customers, greeting cards and all that. Role in international sales growth, forecast growth in an international website, sales in next few years, right? Sales in next five years. And similarly, retail partners, huh? Similarly, retail partners, that strong growth in sales uh, of Dell's boxed chocolate ranges to supermarkets in the last two years aim to sell. Now, this is the strategy that aim to sell a wider range of our products to retail partners in the next two years. Aim to sell a wider range of retail partners in the next two years. More gifts, right? More gifts here. So these are the three strategies. These are the three strategies which which sales director which sales director has proposed. Now, once you guys, once you guys have got the strategies, have read the exhibit, I always recommend to read the requirement again and again to make sure that you are writing. This is one of the main reasons what students want, right? This is one of the main reasons that what students want. Uh, uh, examiner want, right? 
that you have to make sure you have to be specific to the requirement. This is one of the reasons that student fails this, that they are not that much specific to the requirement, right? So the sales director has asked you to provide a set of notes to accompany the presentation he has prepared for the board, which discusses how the sales development strategies he has proposed will assist adults in achieving its strategic aim, right? Commercial acumen skills. So you know the strategies. What are the strategies now? to Dell's shops, to increase or refurbish the shops, make sure the website is more appealing and increase your retail partners, right? Increase your retail partners. Now, in my book, what I've given, in my book, I've given the pointers, the key pointers that can be written, right? Key pointers that can be written. Although we're going to be referring the examiner's answer also, but what I've given here is the key pointers that you can write what I've given here is the key pointers that you can write here, right? So strategic business leader, question does go, my answer, my points that what I'll be making, make sure you're using the right format here. Make sure you are using the right format. I guess uh, the slides are asked here. So do that. Okay, they haven't uh, asked you the slides, but I've made them. So it's up to you whether you make them or not. Yeah. So see, Dell's jobs. Now, what is the requirement? Make sure the requirement comes in your mind while writing because you need to be specific. I've read an SBL's article where examiner clearly states that students were not that much specific, therefore they got failed. So make sure you guys are specific to them, right? That primary sales channel, they should play a key role in the growth and development of dulls, right? So dulls jobs basically are the primary sales channel. You can make this point. These are the pointers. You can make them into the paragraph by drafting, right? By making the points. I, I just made the points. So this is the primary sales channel. They should play a key role in the growth and development of Dells and should help us to achieve our strategic aim. Yes, if if the, if Dells, our strategic aim is to grow, right? So if Dells shops are being reinvested, so that means it will help us, right? Annual sales in our shops have decreased in last three years. Again, it's from exhibits, right? It's from exhibits. We haven't read the complete question in this class, but we have done these questions multiple times before. So that means that annual sales in our shops have decreased in the last three years that need to focus on our customer, make repeat purchases, right? So we need to, we need to make sure if our, if our sales are declining, we need to make sure that uh, our, fo our focus should be that customer make repeat purchases throughout the year, right? Make sure repeat purchases throughout the year. Then shop offers our customers actual experience of our brand and it is where we can build and develop strong customer relationships. So while concluding in this paragraphs, in these three points, I am saying that investing in shops will satisfy, investing in shops will satisfy my aim, right? Guys, again, the, this classes won't be highlighting the formats now, won't be highlighting the skills now. This will give you an idea what to write. That's the main thing. And once that thing is done, we can look into the formats. I've given specific pages on my book in the formats. I've given specific classes for the skills. But first thing is to write, right? So dull shops, we are saying that are going to satisfy my strategic aim. Then similarly, Dell's websites, that our website provide us with the ideal sales environment. Huh? Our website provides us the ideal sales environment to offer new products. So, however, we need to be careful that these new products do not impact on our confectionery sales. Huh? So, these new products do not impact our confectionery sales. So, our website is also providing our strategic aim being successful but making sure that our confectionery sales are not declined by new products we, we we are launching the new products to increase the sales not to decrease our old ones right so make sure that this is the large potential of international sales growth yeah it was an exhibit that why want to we, we want to launch new products is that international sales growth has been seen in new products right 
Dell's website. So helping us to achieve our strategic aim. Huh? Similarly, international website sales, which we were are predicting will grow strongly. International website sales, which we are predicting will grow strongly in the coming years, will also help us to develop our market by targeting a wide range of overseas customers. So thinking on the international website sales and concluding it on a target, that our target is overseas customers, therefore international growth is mandatory. And since this, this website leads to international growth, Therefore, our aim is satisfied. So see, I'm talking about the strategy. So I'm evaluating a strategy and connecting it with the link that our aim through this strategy is satisfied, right? Our aim through this strategy is satisfied, right? And these are not the slides. These are the slide notes because they told us that slides are not required. And again, these are just pointers, right? These are just pointers. We can make the other things more. Now, retail partners, if you're investing in retail partners, it gives you an opportunity to penetrate the market, right? By selling more own label products, right? Through retail partners, what you can do, you can promote your own brand and promoting an own brand is a strategic aim. You can look into the exhibits of your strategic aim. It will be in exhibit one. The production of handmade products to new retail partners, help us to diversify how should we assist in our strategic aim how should we gonna be assisting our strategic aim right so these obviously investing in retail partners I'm gonna promote our strategic aim now a student so this was the strategic question that can be tested sir there's no vision mission obviously they cannot ask you the exact definitions but obviously we have gone through the strategy so we can connect what is strategic aim what is our mission what is our vision in fact if i remember i can make you see the exhibit one so see mission is this strategic aim is this offering customer products and locations they are demanded they are through that means they want to grow uh overseas we aim to offer performance excellence, our leadership, operations, supplier management, customer engagement, staff development. Huh? So see, this is this is why I told you the all uh, whole chapter, right? Then there are other past papers as well, which tested the specific aims, strategic aims, right? So see, the students, those who are attempting this class, the theory class, they should don't be, uh, I would say, hesitated now. They shouldn't be hesitated. If you have attempted, if you have got the complete course, I have solved many past papers alone. But now our target is to cover theory plus a past paper. And towards the end of our sessions, towards the end of our sessions, what in, in my classes, what I have done, I have sold, solved more than 10 past papers, right? I have solved more than 10 complete past papers. That means 100 questions, right? 100 questions so make sure while doing the theory you are not being confused and once our theory is covered we'll be directed towards the complete past paper sessions we'll be directed towards the complete past paper sessions right now i'll give you uh, another question first first let's just read the exam and answer of this question so you got an idea what we need to do let me share the screen now Just a second. Yeah. <clears throat> so guys, again, this is the examiner answer, which will give you just an idea. And obviously reading an examiner answer, marking scripts are always favorable for such papers like SBL and AAA. So see, uh, first thing, which we have also seen in classes, that it is this is the examiner comments, that it is not always possible to publish suggested answer, right? Which cover all valid points. 
So there could be many points which students have made, but I didn't or the examiner did. But candidates will be given the points in which are not in the suggested requirement uh, answer, but are in the requirement, right? So you know that. So see the slide notes. What do we have? <coughs> the slide notes. Uh, what do we have here? Let's just see that. So Dell shops, do they satisfy our strategic aim? Again, they have written more. So don't, don't, don't get worried here, right? That you are writing less. You are writing enough. But these are the complete paragraphs. That as the shops are our primary sales channel, they should play a key role in growth and development, which should help us in achieving our strategic aim. A sales development strategy based on current shops would be considered at market penetration where we aim to increase our share. So that, that satisfies our aim, right? However, there's, this is likely to require us to improve relationship with customer in our shops. Annual sales in our shops have decreased in the last three years. So we are clearly need to focus on customer service to make sure customers return to our shop. So we, we need to make sure that customers Customer are repetitively purchasing. We don't want first time customers. We want them to make make repeated sales, right? This could be helped by more investing in staff training. Obviously, staff training could lead you to uh, make their, their your staff performing best in the prime locations. Investment needs to be uh, done on the customer experience, right? If the customer experience is free, is 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 good. They're going to be giving you more, more money. They're going to be visiting you again and again. Like if I, if I can give you an example of myself, if I uh, like a particular ambience of a restaurant, then I do visit regularly, right? I'm not a one-timer for that restaurant if I like it. So you need to improve your customer experience so that they'll be repetitively getting sales. The closure of 20 shops may be an effective way of improving uh, our image in the customer, however, we must totally close those shops which are not profitable. Yeah, make sure that you are closing. You're closing only 12%, not the 50%. So that wouldn't be impacting that much, but make sure the loss-making shops are closed. These strategies should help us achieving our strategic aim, providing that we ensure the products demanded are available to customers. Shops are also possibly the best place to assist achieving our strategic aim, right? Then website, we have got websites that our website provides ideal sales environments. How we need to be careful that these new products do not impact old products, right? Old products are the key, which are running item. This could help to achieve strategic aim only if these new products are actually demanded by the customers, right? Uh, similarly, how our website provides us the opportunity to develop in our market. A whole range of existing products, wide range of customers, such as corporate and international customers. So one of the Oh, uh, our aim was to supply wherever the product is demanded. So through this, through online website, we could supply the product wherever it is demanded, right? Similarly, helping us achieving our strategy game. However, this will be very dependent on us developing the suitable infrastructure to support international sales growth, right? Again, website management is needs to be very careful. Uh, our brand image is maintained by it. So we employ or we deploy sufficient resources there then international website sales which are predicting will grow strongly in coming years so you need to be aware for that do retail partners also satisfy our strategic aim yeah it could it could give you a good relationship with the supermarkets it could it could give you achieve strong supermarket sales and through retail partnership you could use your own labels right so that's that's your strategy game to make make your brand image Retail partners also give us an opportunity to penetrate in the market, right? Own label products are needs to be done. So if, if someone has read this case, there'll be no, knowing that supermarkets don't give you the own label, but retail uh, partners gives you them. So we should aim to sell more wider range of retail partners, which would also help our strategic aim. Producing a luxury handmade chocolate uh, should help our strategic aim. Yeah, because we, we, we are not that... Uh, budget chocolate, we are the luxury one, Ferrero Rauchers like. Then the production of luxury handmade products to new retailers, partners, would help us to diversify and should assist in the achieve achievement of strategy game, right? So see, the examiner have covered the same points, but with a brief description. So my pointers with a brief description is a perfect way to answer your question. Fine. Guys, again, I'm not practicing the skills here. I'm not thinking of the skills here. I'm not thinking of the formats here. 
our classes for these i'll, I'll conduct these in the sessions right formats square uh, skills and all that what our aim is to cover the theory now for now to cover the theory and then cover what to write in the later sessions we'll be thinking on the formats we will be thinking on the professional skills we'll be solving 10 different questions we are going to solve 10 different questions in an exam time and condition on the practice platform but before that you need to cover the theory right before that you need to cover the theory i hope you guys got an idea <clears throat> Okay, guys. So, uh, one thing which a student have asked, that's a uh, would you be uh, checking our past papers, whether we have enrolled in your SBLs batch or not? Yeah, that's totally a service given by me. So, that's my number. You can send your scripts here. In fact, you can ask your query. That's the WhatsApp, right? So, you can send scripts for checking. Me and my team would be checking it and giving you an individual feedback. Okay. Similarly, what you can do, you can uh, use any questions if you have and you can ask me to solve a paper, right? And this is, this is the complimentary thing. I won't be charging any fees for it. If you if you're attempting if you're facing any difficulty in a requirement you can ask me i have solved more than 10 papers i'm solving regularly sbl's exam so if you want i can solve uh, and upload a video for you and you guys can see and ask me whatever you want whatever the questions you have this is my whatsapp number you can text me and get your query resolved right so it's nine two plus plus nine two double three one two six two three eight four nine perfect 